And yeah, welcome back to the Career Build Series 2023. This is episode number 14. And so last episode, we did a nice long mission, towed a boat down to the south, almost to the arid biome, did a little fire rescue on the way. And so in this episode, I'm going to be working on the stability system a bunch. I did a bunch of work off screen, just mostly a little bit of decorating, a bunch of stability work, trying to kind of get through this. And so I'm kind of starting from scratch with my stability system. I try doing it with functions. I always do it with PIDs and it always works. And for some reason, I decided let's do it with functions this time. And so back here doing some PIDs. And so essentially we have our roll tilt. I want my roll to be zero. I have a P value in there and a constant on on a advanced PID. I then have the PID going to two numerical switch boxes. This is controlling for when I reverse. When you reverse, your fins need to operate backwards. So it's pretty simple. Directional speed sensor, if it's less than zero, directional speed sensor will read a positive number when you're going forward, negative number when you're going reverse. So as soon as it goes negative, it will switch these over and invert them in that way. The fins work correctly when I'm going backwards. So we're going to do this from scratch here. Bunch of playing around with this and trying. And I had it working really well, and then I screwed it up and... So back to trying to get this working. So we're going to start with the roll. And here's our roll component. And we're going to go ahead and test it. And so I just found out that this is inverted. So I need to go like this. And I'll kind of show you my methodology. You might find that interesting. You might not. But I'm going to show you anyway. All right, so these are inverted. Well, let me see. This is going, needs to go there now, and this goes there. So just did a test, and it was inverted. So I'm now coming back in here and trying to get this to be uh, the correct way. So let's go update this. All right, so I've been using my heading hold keypad uh, to input P values. That just makes it easy. It works as long as I'm not trying to uh, use the heading hold. So I'm just going to put a 1 in there for my P value to start with. These are showing me what's going out to my fins on my port side and my starboard side. And so I'm going to make a right turn. So as I make a right turn, I want my starboard to go negative and I want my port to go positive. So negative positive okay so that's the first thing was to make sure that they're in the right direction they were wrong last time they're just opposite so that's done now if you look at what they're doing here is they're outputting a 0 0.01 now the max deflection of those fins is one negative one so if you notice we need to move that decimal place too so let's try to put in a p-value of 100 might work might not work we'll see All right, so now we have a p-value of 100. Now it's too high, it's dancing, so let's drop that. Let's go 50. Let's try to stop that dance. There we go. So you see, 50 stops the dance. Okay. Let's go higher till we... Let's go 75 on there. And we have to upset it to get it to stop. So see, 75, it's very... It's not very upset. We'll stop it here and take a second to stop oscillating. So 75 is probably in the high end. Definitely, you notice too how flat I am. I would like a little bit of roll. A little bit of listing. So probably let's go back to 50 and try that out. And so one thing I want to watch is the numbers here. And this will tell me if I have enough fins. So if this reaches 1 and it's not doing what I need it to do, it means I have too few fins because one is the maximum amount of deflection I get on my fin. You notice I'm only using about 10% of my fins. So that's actually telling me I probably have more fins than I need, which is good because these fins are gonna be multi-purpose fins. They're gonna both account for pitch and roll. And because they're counting for pitch and roll, I need to be able to have them have extra See, it went up to 0.25, so let's say it had to do a bunch of pitch and a bunch of roll at once. That would be maxing out at 0.5. That's still only using half of the capacity of the fins. So beautiful. This is uh, working well. It's smooth. It's not oscillating too much. Gorgeous. All right, so let's back up. You'll notice the stern should come out of the water because I have no pitch system hooked up yet. So we're going to hook up the pitch next. 
Do you notice the stern's coming up out of the water? That's because I have the fins are not doing anything to control my pitch. So I want to put that in there as well. Now I will show you a system that I put in place. There's the uh, invisible ground. I will show you a system I put in place, and we'll go over that too. Is so. When you're using rudders in game, you can pretty much go full deflection on rudders, and it won't try to tip the, air, the tip the craft out of the water. And one of the reasons is because they're limited to about 50, or they're about limited to about 50%, 45 degrees. And so, if you watch this as a pod, we're going full speed. I'm going to push full A, and that's as much deflection as I get. Now I'm going to start tapping the S key and the down arrow. As you see, look, see the azipods increasing its deflection. So see it's increasing its deflection. So I'll show you how all that works as well. So let's go into that first. So I'll show you how I set up, set that system up. And this is also good for cars. If you have a car that, you know, the faster you go, you want the, the wheels to turn less, you can use this. So pretty simple up here. I use the function, I use the clamp. All right, and so X is my input for my desired rotation of the azipod. So X is essentially my helm control of the azipod. Y is the autopilot. So it's adding my controls plus the autopilot. That only is operable on the port. Then I have a clamp here. We have the negative for the low side of the clamp, and we have the positive for the high side of the clamp. Both of them are one. And so we start with one, which is the max deflection. And then I take a linear speed to starboard. So I have a linear speed sensor set to directional. That's going to be a positive. No, that's, is this one absolute? This one is, yeah, this one's absolute. And so I have a linear speed sensor pointing to starboard. And that's going to give me the speed of the stern. And so if the, the stern can go up to a maximum speed about 11 meters per second. I just tested it, saw what the numbers were. It's at 11 meters per second. So... I know that the maximum speed of that stern turning is 11 meters per second. So I then go in here and I essentially set a rate limit. And so let's look at how the formula works. And I will grab a calculator as well. So we have 1 minus z times w. And so z is the speed of the stern. So like I said, it can go up to a maximum of 11 meters per second. So we have 11 meters per second in there. We want to multiply it by the um, the rate limiter. So it's 0 0.065. That's 0 0.715. So we're going to subtract. We're going to, So it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.715. And so that's going to make the lower limit about 0.27 little bit more than that. Uh, 0.2875, something like that. Point, uh, 0.2875 is going to be the maximum deflection angle of the azipod. Now, the slower I go, let's say we go about half that speed. Let's say we go 5 meters per second times 0 0.065 equals 0.325. Uh, so now it's 1 minus 0.325. So it's going to be, what, 675? So now the azipod can turn even more to 0.675 because we're going slower. So it auto rate limits it. So that's, I thought you guys might find that interesting how to auto rate limit the azipods like that. All right, so let's go back in here. And so we have a reasonable P value in there already of 50. So we're actually going to disconnect the roll control altogether. And I'm going to hook my P value up to. The, uh, not the process variable, we'll hook it up to the p-value here. The pitch tilt is now going to go in. So we're, now we're going to address our pitch. And so we're going to look at, so we're going to hook that in to process variables. So that's our pitch tilt sensor is variable. We want to maintain a pitch of zero. That's flat. I'm going to hook it up to the constant on signal for now. It's not always going to be on a constant on. It's going to be triggered by speed. So if I'm sitting idle, I don't want those fins moving constantly. That eats up a ton of electricity. When I'm going over, say, one or two knots, I'll have the stability system kick in. That will be uh, that will be good. All right. And so right now, this is going in. What these are eventually going to do is do some ads. And let me grab the ads here. And so here are a couple ads. 
And so what we're going to do is these fins are going to both do pitch and roll. So they're multipurpose. As you saw, the we only used up to about negative 0.25, positive 0.25 of the fins to hold deflection. Well, it still has 0.75 remaining. So hopefully that gives us enough uh, range for our pitch. And so we're going to hook this in. So the pitch is a little bit different. The pitch does not need to, it needs to be inverted when it goes backwards, but it doesn't need to be inverted per side. So pretty simple. This is going to go just like this. All right, and then I need to delete these out for right now. So then this is going to go, I'm going to leave this like this for now just to tell me how it is. And then I'm going to actually try to think the best way to do this. Let's do both of them at once. We already know that our roll value works. All right, so let's just put that in. And then we can easily dial in the pitch without it. So that's 50 was our P value. And you're not gonna do this. I've been trying to do more of this using property numbers. Just ma makes it a lot easier if I need to input a change that I can, like if I get a bunch of oscillation, I can easily just change the number. So let's do a property number uh p value roll 50. all right so that's in there now and so that's going to give us the p value roll i can easily change that when i open the microcontroller all right and then so let's just hook this up correctly so let's see so i'm trying to set this up correctly correctly so this first one here it only gets okay the first one here is inverted to start with because it's on one side so that's plugging into the inversion plugs into this ad and then we go like that and then we need to invert the whole shabazz here and so i'll walk you through this in a second in, in the event you are confused, which is probably potentially likely because I'm not explaining it very well. All right, so that is good. And then what I want to do is go like this. All right, so when we move backwards, the fins operate backwards. All right, so before, if I was listing to the left, I need the port fin to go negative to lift that side up. When I'm going in reverse, it's opposite. When I'm going in reverse, I need that fin to go positive to lift that side up all right so when you're in reverse the fins work backwards so right now uh this ad here let me try to get it so it's cleaner here so you can actually see the freaking thing but so right here we have a negative x all right which is in because this is on most likely the port side this is on the port side so we need that port fin inverted to roll us and so we're sending a negative value to the ad these fins should, I haven't dialed them in yet. They might be backwards. I might have to invert them off the bat, but we'll figure that out in a second. But these are going to go through, and so I'm going to add both the roll and the pitch. They're going to go into the switch off state. Then when I go in reverse, I need to take the inverse of that, and that is switched by if the directional speed sensor goes negative, it switches it to the inverted for backwards, essentially. Okay, good. So now we need to figure out this one. So we're gonna we're gonna continue with the uh, pitch as positive. We'll see if it needs to be inverted. It quite likely might. And so this one, as you can see, it goes into the default figure uninverted, like that. And then so this can go into there. And then for reverse, this now needs to be inverted. Okay. So that should be good there. All right, so let's go test it now. The pitch could be inverted. If the pitch is inverted, we will quickly tell because I can give it a ridiculous number. I can put like a thousand in there as a p value and it will go the opposite of what it needs. So say the bow is up and I put a thousand in there and the bow goes up even more, we know, yep, inverted. If the bow is up and I put a thousand in and the bow dives into the ground, I know it's the correct direction. So we're going to start by putting a 1 in there. So remember, we put the roll. I already set it as 50 for the p-value. All right, so we're pretty 
good. And you see we have a bow high, a little bit of bow high. Let's look at our numbers here. You see we're in a turn, so let's stop turning and let's see these kind of uh, straighten out here. All right, you can see we're we're bumping, we're, we're porpoising up and down too. So let's go ahead and throw that th ridiculous number in. So let's look at our bow really quick. So notice the bow is up, so that tells us that we do have a tilt going on. Let's throw a thousand in there. Okay, that's not going to help because it's too much. Uh, let's go on a pen for now. Sometimes you can get it to dive and and and, be, and keep itself. So let's see. Let's. Um, so I'm trying to think the fins. So in order to get the bow to go down, I have to have these go negative. So notice these are constantly negative. So most likely these are in the correct direction. So let's go to 20. Oh, 50. Let's do 50 just to start with. All right. So see these are really negative now. So we know that the pitch is in the correct direction. All right, so that's actually not too bad. You see that's pretty level there. All right, so now let's do some maneuvers. Maneuvers are really why I'm doing this. Like, you know, if this was a standard rudder vehicle, it would be much easier. Because it's an azipod, it's much more challenging. First test, can I go backwards without the stern lifting out of the water? Yes, so remember last time the stern lifted straight out of the water? doesn't do that anymore. Now we should have a, a, val a big negative value on. Remember, we're going in reverse, so it's inverted. So we had a negative value going for forward. We'll have a negative value going backwards. But as you can see, doing a good job of keeping us level. Now I'm going to turn. We'll see if this is enough to handle the turn. And as you can see, able to do a full turn now, perfectly stable. All right. Let me add a second azipod. Let's make it a worst case scenario. So worst case, it will lift. Let's test it, see if I can get it to do it without that. So let's try it. I might not be able to do it. It might screw up other things. See, I don't need both azipods when I'm going in reverse like that. So I'm not really worried about it. All right, let's try one. Okay, one's in here, perfectly stable. Let's add the second one. Now this is at full speed, mind you. I'm not gonna be doing this maneuver at full speed. That's ridiculousness. All right, so I don't mind if it's not gonna really work. So let's do 50. 50 was working pretty well forward. Let's test it, let's go forward. Let's do some maneuvers. Let's put on some, whoa. I didn't straighten out my other pods. There we go. I also added the two and the three key on the helm now will center the other pods, so. All right, good, so we're moving along nice here. Let's go ahead and let's do this, full wind. I test all my vehicles with full wind. I want them to behave themselves in full wind. All right, we have a following sea, let's turn. Turning around the waves can often be challenging. So that's nice and convenient that both 50s are working. So this might get a little jump. So I'm trying to, trying to get the other pods straightened up and trying to go right into the wind here. But you see it's behaving really nicely in 100% wind. It's doing a little bit of flying, but guess what? Uh, I'm gonna, I'll put an anti-fly system in here. So, you know, of course this is nonsense in real life. You're not launching a tugboat like this in waves like this. But um, the other thing that, you know, a lot of people expect out of storm arcs is they expect, they want realism, they want accurate, 100% accurate physics, and then they don't operate their vehicle like you would in real life. And so if you want the physics to be accurate, you also need to operate accurately. And so, for example, this would absolutely destroy you. Dropping from that height, you'd slam onto the ground, and it would beat the hell out of you. You'd be, you know, it would break your legs. And so what would a normal person do in these conditions? Slow down. 
And so now we notice if we go down, we we dropped about oh seven knots, maybe seven eight knots. That looks better, doesn't it? So that's one thing a lot of people fight is is, is they don't want to uh, they don't ever want to reduce the thrust when they're in bad weather. Well, guess what? You know, we used to drive, we used to uh, take the boat out in choppy seas in Florida all the time, and if you didn't reduce the thrust, you were gonna go to the hospital that night because it would, you know, you're slamming down hard. You know, if the boat goes 10 feet out of the water and it comes down and slams, well, that's like you jumping off of a 10 foot drop. And now you're doing it repeatedly, swell after swell after swell. Well, you know, especially, you know, my knees have jump off, one, and my back especially, but jump off one 10 foot drop you know, I'm probably not doing well after that. Now imagine doing it every, I don't know, 10 seconds. You know, so you slow down because what you want to do is you want to reduce that. So by reducing your speed, well, now maybe we're only going off of a five-foot jump, you know. And then that's still going to beat your body up, so you slow down even more. So this is what you'd actually do in real life is you'd slow down. But as you can see, the tugboat is working really well. Always like to test it in 100% wind. That's um, always a good test. So one thing I put in a lot of my boats, I, I don't really think this needs it, is an anti-fly system. What the anti-fly system does is essentially it has a, uh, usually I have a fluid sensor. And if the fluid sensor senses that it's not in the water anymore, it will, it will reduce the thrust. And so, or it interrupts the thrust. It's kind of like a blipper on a motorcycle. It interrupts the thrust. And then, so when you come out of the water, it says, nope, you don't get any thrust. And then as soon as you get back in the water, it gives you some thrust again. And so that's important in game because in game, as soon as that propeller gets out of the water, it revs up to an insane RPS. It will rev out to your max RPS. And if you have your build set, like a lot of people, they don't set their max RPS to what the propeller will actually do in game, which I do. Like my propeller will go... Or my my engine RPS is limited to six RPS in this build, and so because it will only go up to six and it operates at a max of six, it won't. You notice it wasn't flying. A lot of builds, the reason they fly is you set your max RPS to twenty, and then because of the resistance of the water, the propeller will only allow your engine to go up to say ten. Now you go out of the water. Well, you're still asking twenty from the engine. Now it doesn't have any water resisting the propeller's rotation. So now the propeller can go up to, you know, the engine can spin up to 20. Well, now that puts the propeller back in the water and it hits the water going 20, you know, RPS and it flips your boat. And people are like, why is it doing that? Well, it's because you didn't test it properly. If you took it out in the water and you went in a straight line, you said, okay, a max thrust in calm conditions the most RPS my engine will give me is 10, and you set your max RPS on your engine to 10, well, guess what? Comes out of the water, your propeller's doing 10. Comes out of the water, propeller's still doing 10. Propeller goes in the water, do not fly, do not do a backflip. So that's part of, you know, how you can set it up so it's more realistic. So let's go ahead, and I, I added a bunch of systems. I tried a bunch of stuff. I tried some old stuff of how to fix this and so I have a couple things I need to delete out and I can actually shrink this panel up which anytime I can shrink the panels up in the build is nice so some other things I did um, I did a bunch off screen it was just monotonous mundane testing stuff so that's why I didn't include you guys but the um, so I have three fins here uh, these are on the skegs on these fins on the uh, keels rather and I have two on the other pods and so you notice these are XML blocks, so I hid these. And these are the much desired one by three wedges. Now, I know a lot of people don't like XML. Some people even call it cheating. It's not cheating. Um, <laughs> if you want the block, you can make it. I know the devs should put it out. It would be a great, huge crowd pleaser if they just came out with one by three wedges. I don't know why they don't do it. But it took me about two seconds to make that XML block. And you notice I have three fins hidden in here. This is a XML blocked. It's XMLed out to 1x3. This is a 1x1 wedge XMLed out to 1x3. And I can hide the fins in there. And now I have a better look. And I have functionality. So that's what's doing all of that. Now, a lot of people have issues where the boat, the, the nose of the, uh, the bow, nose, the bow of the boat will dive underwater. 
because of their stability system. Well, that's one of the reasons I only put the stability system on the stern is in, in real life, you have trim tabs that are only on the stern as well, but I put the stability system on the stern, the bow is free to go, so the bow will push up over the wave. The stern will then try to push the bow back down. It's very natural. It's essentially acting like gravity by having the, it's essentially replacing gravity that we kind of don't have all the time because the mass is low on these. And that um, that will help us, you know, by keeping that stability system just in the stern. I do have to fix something. I did some stuff off screen that again, I'll show you here. So I put in some battle cannon pieces and delete. I actually, you see how I have some symmetry issues here. I have a couple symmetry issues I have to fix, but I put battle cannon pieces in here. And so this was part of the re-ballasting re initiative. And so I needed to add some mass to the stern. And so why use battle cannon pieces? And I'll show you here. The issue is they're expensive and I'm in a career game, but so we have battle cannon extension. Where is it? Is this it? Which one is it? One of them will fit one more. Okay, it's these. So it's these uh, battle cannon barrel extensions. Look at their mass. Their mass is 40. So we get 40 weight for a block that is for three blocks, essentially. So this is 40 mass right here. I have to hook something up here. So let's grab another uh, mass block there. And let's go like this. So this is what this is going to look like. And so why did I put battle cannon pieces? So let's do a quick count. So we have one, two, three, six, nine. Those are nine blocks. All right. So that's nine times four. All right. And so, you know, that's nine times four. That was a 36, 36 um, mass. If, and then we have two weight blocks. If that was nine weight blocks, the weight blocks weigh 10 apiece. I just I screwed that math all up, didn't I? <laughs> anyways, uh, let's see. Any, anyways, uh, I'm trying to do it in my head quickly. So this here, three blocks, that's 40. If we didn't weight blocks, that would be 30. These are only 10 apiece. So this gives us a little extra mass. And then these are, you know, adding extra mass. So each of these is 40. So with that one, two, three, four, Oh, one, two, three, six, seven. So that's seven, right there. Eight, nine, ten. So that's four hundred mass I've added to the to the stern here. Now the other option is if you can fit them. They're tough to fit flywheels. That's three hundred mass. Look at how much space that takes up. So these are one of the most efficient um, use. The most efficient ways to add mass is these battle cannon pieces. You can easily, you know, add. Uh, 40 mass in a three spot. So that's why I put those in. They're expensive though. So you make sure you have the cash for it. All right. So I need to fix those. I noticed those are asymmetrical when I was doing some stability. Oop, let me grab these. There we go. All right. And so I'm going to repaint this. All right. So that is now fixed. So I did that as well. Um, cooling. A lot of people, oh, can't cool a module, can't cool a module, can't cool a modular. This cooling system works the dream and the main you know this, this is all i have i have one pump that's it pumping to one heat sink each engine that's it i could go to full throttle never overheats i actually have it set to maintain 100 degrees the entire time and the reason is because the maximum rps in these engines are only about six all right they're under stressed and they're not making a lot of heat and so that makes it easy to uh to not have issues all right so that's good Let's see, what else did I want to work on here? So I'll talk about some other things I did. I did some aesthetic stuff. I put on, I did some reshaping on the front here. Got to put a couple facets there, put some facets up here, widen the top up here, worked on the railing some. Put a radar in, the radar's no longer, no, it's not connected. I really want to put all of my own stuff in this build. And so the one thing I've yet to tackle is radar. So I'd like to make a radar uh, soon. Also fix the winch from last episode that was broken. Can't think what else. Just a lot of just tedium. Uh, I don't know if I added the tires. Um, I must have added the tires since. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's do tug stability working. And so I'm going to save that. Yes. And then I want to save it again as where are we at here? 
let's save it as this one. And the reason I'm doing that is if I if I have some issue and I screw up my stability system and I have to go back, I can go to the the tug stability working and I know it's working and I can just copy the microcontroller. This microcontroller is now bloated and I can fix this. So I tried a couple different systems. I used to do it with altimeters. Uh, some of my builds I do it with altimeters. That can be good on these builds that need the Azipod builds. And the reason is as it, it accounts for both pitch and roll. So if you have an altimeter, say, in the azipod or near the azipod, and then you account, so you sit it in the water, and you say, okay, it's reading, it was reading negative 0.91. So I put a correction factor in there, 0.91. So that way it reads zero when it's where it's supposed to be. If the port azipod comes up out of the water, whether it's pitching or whether it's rolling, it doesn't matter. The fins try to counteract it. Now, there are some issues with that. And so ideally, I don't like to do that too much. Let me see. I'm going to change some names here as well because I had a bunch of different nonsense I was working with. Let's see. Roll tilt, pitch tilt stays. Directional speed sensor um, stays. Port azipod p-value can go. Uh, port azipod starboard, that can go. That can go. The alt altimeters can go. Okay, what do we have here? Directional speed, tit, tilt, as a pod. Okay, good. So that's now shrunk. I'm going to have to reconnect a bunch of stuff because I, you know, when you move these nodes, you end up having to, uh, you end up having to reconnect them anyway. So, okay, good. So I'm shrinking that up. I, I had to add a bunch of stuff and then now I was able to finally kind of delete it down to where it needed to be. So that's all my starboards. That's all my ports. That's pitch tilt. What do you port as a pod? Don't need that anymore. Okay. Directional speed sensor, roll tilt, pitch tilt. Okay, these need to be reconnected. So this is roll tilt. So that's my roll tilt sensor there. This is my pitch tilt is good. My directional is good. Fins are good. Roll tilt's good. This is, I don't need port as anymore. Let me check what I have here. Yeah, port as it can go. Okay. So I was able to shrink this down quite a bit. All right, good. Oh, I shouldn't have moved that, but uh, whatever. I can always reconnect it. Roll tilt. See, it disconnects when I move it. So. All right, and then we need to fix our fuel tank here. But a bunch of that stability works. So now, as you can see, with an Azipod, even with Azipods, which are the most challenging to get to work in game, um, it, we are very super rock solid. We have no issues. I should be able to tow with that really well. All right, let's go ahead and save that again. Let's see. Let's, I want to do the port as he working. I also want to save it as this other one here. Okay, good. So now we have a really good working tug here. Trying to think what else I did that um, I'd show you here. Not too much. You know, I was almost contemplating pushing this forward and cutting down the size of the area here, but it's going to cause too much work for no real good reason. Let's do a couple. Let's let's look at a couple building things that I want to do. So one thing I want to like to do is put in the water cannon. So let me bring up the reference material. All right, so here is the reference material for the tug for the stand tug that is somewhat inspiring so i think mine looks a little bit better but um you notice so the the bridge on mine is longer and so that makes the mast look like it's too far back um and so i think we can fix that by pushing some stuff in here and so i have the radar up here i don't know what this is but i'm using that as radar it might be a type of radar this has like a uh that's the air conditioner compressor, I would say, for the air conditioning for inside for the HVAC. And then it has, uh, this one here has a, a radar there. So, you know, some antennas there. And then one of them, some of the pictures. I'll actually go to the pictures here, too. So if we look at the pictures of the tug itself here, I'd like to see this big picture here, but it won't show it. 
So you can see as some of that stuff, they, you know, a couple of these pictures are different. So like here, it has a water cannon. So I'm not, you know, I had a lighter on one of them, but I have to, I'm not putting in those screens. I'm not going to play with that. But um, I would like a water cannon would be nice to have. Put that maybe mid where this radar is because I'm going to use the radar up here. And then I think I'm going to put the water cannon here and maybe a spotlight. So I think that will kind of uh, flush the area out a little bit more. So I think we'll do that because it looks very barren. Uh, with the mast up, the mast being that far back, it looks pretty barren. So I kind of want to fix that. The other thought I had was putting the mast. I don't know. I don't want to screw with the mast too much, but let's put in a water cannon. And that should help. So the way I tend to do water cannons, I'm going to try to, it's going to be hard with this. I put a decorative block there, which is kind of, I can do it. I think right here, maybe. Let's get rid of symmetry. Okay. Problem is, let's see. Could just, let me, let me grab a pivot. So I want a liquid pivot. Could sit it on top of the deck like so. I like a recess, but the uh, actually, yeah, I can recess it. Let me see. I kind of like it being asymmetrical. Let's stick that there. Let's see where we're at here. So I'm just going to cut this. What is that? Oh, okay, this is the ex external player sensor. So as long as I'm clear of that, I'm clear. And then, so I need to find one of these. These are tough to get down to. So I need to path somewhere to, can't do there. I need a path down and then I need to be able to bring liquid down through the roof. So a little bit of a chore to do that. But, um, See, like this, I can't go go through there because I have that. A lot of talking to myself, sorry guys, but um, try to figure this out here. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab this. I'll cut it, rotate it like that. Now we'll go into the floor like so. All right, and the reason I put it this direction is this is going to be, I need to path out the water connection. And so I, the door is, is, a, is a sore spot because the door, this is tough here. Actually, I can go here. Okay. All right, the door has that frame around it, so I can't cut into the door too much. But it's all right. I don't need to. All right, so I'm making progress here. All right, so this is all good cuts here. I can cut through all this. Nice, nice, nice. All right, this is, this is beautiful. All right, good. Did I have something there? No. Okay, what's going in there? Okay. That's that's fine. That's going up to to the uh, fillers. All right, I can. That's fine. I can still go across the deck here like that, and then I can get in there. All right, good. So I am uh, even. Can I go there? No, that's uh, what is that? What is this? Oh, uh, this is uh, this is supposed to be deaf here. Let me just do this for now. This is supposed to be my deaf connection, diesel exhaust fluid. I have. I'm gonna put that there as a reminder that that's there. And so I'm pathing the water down. The water is gonna go down and be pumped up from the engine room. All right. So that's good. So let's start plumbing this up. This is some of the things that can be challenging if you do this too late is now you've got a bunch of stuff that you have to move. So, But, you know, again, I'm trying to add functionality. I really want to get us into as much career gameplay as possible. And so I kind of have to get this boat to there. And had a little bit of a struggle last episode with just some issues of, you know, the Azpos weren't working correctly. They are now. 
And so this is really working well. And so that's why I kind of took a deep dive by myself and just kind of worked on some of the systems getting up to snuff. You know, if you, if you want to see anything specifically of how I did something, you know, make sure you put a comment and I'm happy to go back through it. But some of it's just, it's tedious. It's me spawning the vehicle, testing. Nope, failed test, test again. Nope, not the right way to do it. And there's always eight ways to do it. You'll see in the comments all the time, people are like, oh, you should do it this way. It's like, there's eight ways to do everything. We all have our preferences and our reasons why we do certain things. And even if a way's better, you might not be as competent with that. And so you choose to do it this way because that's what you're most comfortable with or uh, you've had the least amount of issues with or you have space constraints. And so, you know, there's always eight ways to do everything in game. But like I said, if you uh, would like to see it and how I did something, just, uh, just you can just drop a message. Or comments and I will uh, go over it. I think that's sometimes better. Go over how I did it than you know, watch me through the struggle process of just testing, going back, testing, going back, testing. All right, so that's plumbed in. All right, let's paint up here. All right, so that works nicely there. Nice. All right, good. So that is good. And then let's. They do everything as white. I'm kind of doing as black because for me, this white is overpowering here. But um, I might actually do this as orange. Kind of, I have like this search and rescue orange I use sometimes. So I'm doing it this way because, unfortunately, we need big pivots to move uh, liquid through. And so I'm doing it this way because I can easily pass this through. I have to make sure this is gonna, let me, I need to check something really quick too. I wanna make sure this isn't gonna get hit by the antenna or the, uh, so this this here, that uh, protuberance is gonna go away. That protuberance was for the radar. I'm putting the radar on this here, so. We have good clearance. We're not going to hit anything. I might put a camera up there at some point. So I'm actually going to... Let's delete this protuberance for right now. Uh, all right. So this is a good... This is still working well. I can even go higher on this. Probably go one higher just because I want to be able to shoot down. And if it's too short, I'm not going to be able to shoot down over the radar. So it actually, it has, um, oh, I'll see how I like the color. I need some more contrast color, so I'm kind of happy with this being orange. But they have it as a white, um, as a white post and an orange top. So, all right, so I'm going to go like this. And so I need to do a hose connection because I'm trying to make sure I'm not going to hit anything is the is the problem. So it's going to go 90 left, 90 right. So if I put it on the interior side, it's not going to hit. It'll probably be all right if I put it on here. So let's put it here. Let's go lower. I'm just thinking this out in my head of how this has to connect and then you know these hose anchors are bulky man. All right then I want to pivot robotic pivot. All right. All right, and then what I usually do is I do a small impeller. And so I'm just going to stick it there. These impellers can always are always a pain to get the orientation correct. So I will generally just drop them somewhere and then paste them like that. All right, that should work there. All 
And then what do we have here? This is fluid in, of course it is, that's fluid out. All right, oh, that's not worth it. That's not worth that has to go on. Um, where the hell does undo? There we go. There we go, that's supposed to be on this part here. I need to make sure that doesn't clip. It could clip, so I have to deal with it. But um, All right, so this is going to be the oh, fluid in. Yep, okay, so that's fluid in. Actually, I, I had it the way I wanted it, I think. Yeah, I had it the way I wanted it. I thought I had it the way I wanted it. I most certainly did. All right, and then this is fluid out. Fluid in. Oh, what, what am I doing? Uh, yeah, it has to be the way it was. Okay. And, you know, I'll just now the length. That's too long. The one that shows on the reference material is pretty short. I think it will do like that. I think we'll be fine. Problem is the bulkiness of the hose connection that I have to make makes it look pretty bulky. All right, and so this is going to go like that. That looks bulky, man. So it's, it's definitely on the tall side. But I'll test it out. We'll test it, make sure it runs, make sure it operates first, and then I can change it as necessary. So plug that in. So now we have a hose connection, which will let the fuel out. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and get this plumbed, and then I can make some visual work on it later. So where to port some water is the question. You need to be able to get down to the deck is the issue here. I'm kind of... Need to find a place to reach the deck. You know, I do it kind of like pipes everywhere. It kind of makes it look alive in here, but it's also a pain to find a, find a way to get some water. Oh my god, where am I going to get water from? It has to come down here. Um... Where's my? I could just take it right out of the wall. Let's do that. Instead of being a pain here, we'll take it right from there. That's always in the water anyway. All right. Not good. So that that'll work. All right, so this will be the water draw for this. Be here. All right, so that'll be water draw for there. That goes all the way up. We'll paint in here. I'm trying to paint as oh, trying to paint as I go to make sure I don't miss it, and especially seeing I like to use it in the careers. Actually, go out and do some missions in the career series. I want it working well. So, uh, one thing I forgot, which is probably going to cause me stress is I'll open up the build and fix it. So right here. So this here I forgot to do. So that's um I need to hook that P value and I was gonna be like, why doesn't it work? Well it, because I disconnected the P value. And so that's good. And then what I want to do is directional speed sensor here. Um so I want to do a threshold gate and a knot. So if this is between oh let's say Uh, one negative one and one meter per second. So that's about two knots. Um, so essentially, if it's not that, i.e., we're moving. Get a clamp instead of a threshold. 
There we go. All right, so now if it's not, essentially if we're moving, if it's not, you know, below two knots, it will trigger the PIDs, both PIDs. All right, so that will turn on the PIDs. So now, you know, I did a constant to start with, but now that, uh, you know, I don't, like I was saying, I don't want to sit in stationary and have those fins moving. It will eat our battery very quickly. I, I, I'll show you at some point the Damon 2111. It literally has, like, almost 100 fins in it. And when I had it sitting there, it would drain my batteries in, like, a couple minutes because the fins were all moving as I was just, like, rocking on the waves. And then once I'm up and moving, I produce more than enough electricity to not have to deal with it. But I tend not to do a lot of batteries. Like this is a this is a lot of batteries for me because my generation systems keep up with them. I don't need a ton of batteries. All right, um, that's done. What else did I want to do? There's something else I want to do over here. I forgot. Um, okay, whatever. Um, let's see. I need to get this system going. So, see, this is. Like, this is blocky because of this. Hmm. Yeah. I don't like... See, I don't like this here. It's just too wide. That's the issue I have with it. I don't know. Let's test it out. I can work on the aesthetics later. I just want to get the systems running to make this work. All right, so that's good. Let's make a quick microcontroller. I have a million of them for this, but I I enjoy making new ones. Uh, my you know I always get better. The more I do it, the better I get. So it's like I'll often go back to an old microcontroller and I'm like, why is this like this? Why did I do this? And I spend more time like fixing it than I do just um you know actually I, then I would have spent building a new one and the new one would be better. All right, so let's see. How do I want to do this? I'm trying to think the best way to do this. I think I'm going to just, I, I'm just going to do a manual panel. That always is best for me, I find. Let's do a composite input panel. You know, sometimes on the bigger craft, I'll have a seat just for firefighting, or if I'm not using up, down, left, right, I'll use that as firefighting nozzles, but I'm using all those. So let's see, properties. I need two number outputs to the different pivots, and I need a number output to the motor. Okay. Out. 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 Number. All right, good. That's good. I didn't name any of them, did I? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Pitch. Motor. Okay. And so the panel is going to be need up, down, left, right. Oh, and I need to start start the sucker too. Hmm. Let's see. That's annoying. Um, trying to think of the best way to do this so that I don't have to add a button, but you're going to have to have that many buttons. It's just the way of it. Unless I put a throttle, but I don't want a throttle there. All right, so let's do up down counter. All right, up down counter. I should I'll do this once I get that going. Point zero zero one enabled zero negative one two one. Okay. So let's see. Uh, one. This is yaw. So let's do. I think of this way to do this. So one and three are going to be pitch. Two and four are going to be yaw. So two, we'll say, is going to be left, right, there. And then what I'm going to do is, 
If I press both of them at the same time, that will recenter it. So that way, uh, that way I also can do a reset function without having to have a separate button. And then these are going to be, you know, I'll invert, the, I'll change these as necessary if they're backwards or whatever. Pitch is there. I could do something tricky, tricky, tricky here. I'm going to do something tricky, tricky to start this motor. It might be a mistake. We'll see. Um, it'll make it a little bit complicated, but again, I'm, I'm mainly going to be the person using this. You know, a lot of my builds, I would love to get more builds out, but it's just... It's hard for me to get stuff, you know, to a state where I feel it's actually finished. So what I'll do here is I'm going to do a, I'm not going to make a variable speed on, uh, I don't know. You know what I will do? A, uh, no. Yeah, I've got a cool way to do this. It's going to be a pain and people are going to hate it, but, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyways. Uh, let's see. All right, so if I do this setup, it's going to shut the motor off. So the motor is going to be uh, 0.01 enabled 0 to 1. Okay, so that's going to be the speed of the motor for the water flow. If I press 2 and 4, it's going to shut this off. All right. If I press... Um, let's see, two and four will shut this off. Okay. If I press two and one, it will start the flow of the water and increase the flow of the water. If I press have to be the opposite ones, four and three, it will decrease the flow of the water. Let's try this. I might hate it. Probably will. Let's see. All right, so let's do a panel. So this will allow me to get it into a four slot. I could easily just change. Change it to a bigger, another panel, but I'm going to be complicated to start with, um, just for the giggles of it. So this is something I don't need constant access to. You know, it's just how I can put it on this side here. There we go. You know, how often am I going to be fighting fires? You know, so I just need to adjust it a little bit, and I'm going to mostly, you know either be driving or controlling this, so it's not a big deal. It's not the most ideal way to control something. Could just put a handle somewhere too, but that's an interesting thought. Put a handle. Let's try this. Let's try something different. Let's be different. How about we be different for a change? Let's go like this. Can't put it there. You're killing me. Killing me, Smalls. I can't, I'm not going to put it there. Oh, uh, handle probably going to take up too much space here. Yeah, I forgot a handle is going to take up more space. Handle takes up, like, how much space does a handle take up? Just lay on the ground so I could see you. What's it doing? I'm trying to see how much space it takes up width-wise, too. Handle needs a lot of space, doesn't it? Yeah, see, I'd lead, need three wide to do a handle. So I'm not doing a handle. So that was a thought. I was going to have a handle stick out there, but I don't have the space for it. So do a panel. And then it will be, let's go through this. Uh, let's see. Oh, great. I'm trying to remember all my, all my numbers here.
Okay, pitch is one and three. All right, that's what I thought. Pitch is one and three. I'm probably going to hate that I have this as a... Uh, have these multifunctions, but we'll see. Uh, fire, pitch, fire, nozzle. Okay, there we go. Uh, arrow button up, push, one. This is going to be... Right, fire nozzle. Arrow button to the right. Push to. Left, fire nozzle, arrow button. Nope, that's wrong. Up. Down. Arrow button down. Keep clicking toggle. I mean, not do toggle. Okay, and then let's do electricity. Let's do composite. Let's plumb this all up. All right, let's uh, play with it. Electricity. Should be it there. Yep, that's it. All right, and that goes to the master switch. One thing I did too is I just set these master switches to auto on, to start in the on position and the fuel valves. That's why I haven't had to go downstairs to start the vehicle up. So makes it so that when I want to work on it, I can just quickly go in there, click those, and then I don't have to go downstairs anymore to start up. And then when I'm actually kind of operating in it, realistically, I can go do that. Clutch needs a little bit of work. All right, let me see if, oh, see, that's super tall, so I'm gonna shorten it. The other one's shorter too. I might, might play with it quite a bit, so. But um, let's start checking on it. That's backwards, of course it is. So what was it? Um, I'm trying to remember how to start it. So I can do QE. Trying to remember how to start this sucker. Um, QE. How was it? Try this. QE. There we go. Okay, that's my start. What's it doing? Oh, it's backwards. I forgot it's backwards. Okay. Is the yaw correct at least? The yaw is backwards too. So they're just both backwards. So I need to go down and in. So. Oh my god, what am I doing here? Oh, that shut it off for me. Okay. All right, so really disliking how I have that set up. So let's, let's finish working on this, and then we'll call it a vid. So I have plenty of panel space. I'm, like, I'm trying to, like, be a little bit too precious with panel space. Like, I can go all down these panels, too, for really, like, unnecessary things. So let's go. Come on. Let's do this. Move this panel over here. And then I have two blank spaces here. I have two blanks under here. And one of those will be um will be the turn on. Because I don't I don't ever change the nozzle spray pattern like you know you can, but I don't do that. So let's try to, I'm going to have to, crap, 
Uh, let's see. I can daisy these out. That works. Um, let's see what I want there. I want a three. And then I'll do a stow button. That will work. Okay, good. So let's do... Let's do a button, just thinking. Button toggle, three. Can't do three. Uh, button toggle, five. Activate fire nozzle. All right. And then if I shut the nozzle off, they'll auto center. That'll make it easier. All right, good. And then that will still be open to discussion what that is. And so this actually, I don't have to really do anything because what's going to happen here is I can daisy these. So let's do, so this here will go to there and then that will still go there and that will be able to read that one there. Nope, this is going to cause problems. Okay. That's fine. Um, this is going to be three. I have to redo these numbers anyway. Uh, four, this is going to be five. Six. Seven. Eight. Okay, that works now. Now let me fix this here. Okay. Then if it's stuff that I just pushes that I generally mute, move, I usually do um, like this orange and then green will just tell me it's on. All right, so let's go. That's going where it's supposed to go. And then all these numbers need to change. That's fine. So pitch and yaw both inverted anyway. All right, so pitch and yaw are inverted. Okay, that fixes those. All right, good. And then I need to read, the numbers are all screwed up now too. So what do they need to go up? They need to go up by four. So this is gonna be eight. That one's six. That one's seven. That one's five. Good, that's done. Then this is just going to switch to a numerical switch box. This doesn't need to be super complicated. All right, and then if I read channel three, channel three will switch that on, and then I'm going to do a not. And if that is not on, that will reset the two. So when the system's not on, it will stow in position. And when the system is on, it will uh, allow me to fight the fires. Let's test this system out. This this should work better. It I don't like the way it looks. I don't. So I really I'm going to work on that. But. Um, All right, so water's coming on. Okay, it isn't. That'll be why right there. All right, so make a really good progress on this. This is getting to the point where I really can get this out in a career. Um, things I'm missing, like under the seats, I'm gonna put some storage for you know, health packs, things like that. Right now, they're, you see they're, they're filled with nothing, but they will be health packs, so that'll be easy to store things there. 
Um, you know, put some more repair equipment, make sure there's plenty of repair equipment in the engine room so I can go to repairs. Uh, next episode, I'm probably going to do some more building. I want to put in a harbor generator. And part of the reason is I want to be able to go out in the world and stay out in the world as long as possible and go to some of these more far-flung rescues. There we go. Okay, water. Good water flow there. From my seat, I can control this pretty well. So I'll work on this some. I really don't like the way it looks, so I have to fix that. I have some other fire nozzles that I like better. But as you can see, it's working well. We have one now, so we can do some quick firefighting missions where we'll don't have to get out of the boat. Easily, It's much easier to put them out like this. But uh, All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.